If I were to just tell you that sugar is bad, I'd be preaching to the choir, right? We all know that. We know that it's not good for us. We know that it has a lot of different effects within the body. But in typical Thomas DeLauer fashion, what I want to do in this video is break it down a little bit more. I want to help you understand what sugar does inside the body and also what sugar does inside the brain. Because here's the thing. Sugar is not just basic glucose. Sugar or refined sugar is entirely different. It does something quite different in your body and it's important that you understand what's happening. So first off, let's start with what it does in the actual body and then we'll break down what it does in the brain. First and foremost, you hear me talk about sugar and its relationship with inflammation. Before I go into detail about that, I have to give you a quick summary of what inflammation is. You see, inflammation is a very simple process that occurs within the body. We need it to function, we need it to heal. Whenever you're done working out, inflammation is triggered. Whenever you're sick, inflammation is triggered. Whenever you have any kind of infection, inflammation is triggered. The problem is that inflammation, when it's chronically elevated, becomes a very big problem because your body is in a heightened sense of alert. So basically, it's trying to fight something off. But when we consume sugar, we have a massive increase in inflammation. There have been studies that have proven that. But it all has to do with something known as advanced glycation end products. What these advanced glycation end products are, are basically a response to a reaction with sugar within the body. See, we always have a certain level of proteins and fatty acids that are flowing through the bloodstream. It doesn't matter if you're fasted or not. Your body is breaking down fats, it's breaking down proteins, and it's allowing those particles to flow through the bloodstream. Well, when you consume sugar, that sugar responds with the proteins and with the fats, and it creates a little bit of a reaction. And this reaction creates these advanced glycation end products, which I'm going to refer to as AGEs. These AGEs are what trigger inflammation within the body. You see, studies have actually shown that when you consume 50 grams of sugar, which is a modest amount, typically what you'd find in a soda, you're going to have an increase in C-reactive protein levels within 30 minutes. And those C-reactive protein levels are going to remain elevated for over two hours. This has been proven time and time again, giving us a solid link between sugar and inflammation. But what else do these AGEs do, these advanced glycation end products? Well, unfortunately, they react with aging components within your body. These AGEs break down collagen, and they break it down quite dramatically, which means that if you're consuming a lot of sugar, you probably notice that your complexion isn't very good. You probably notice that you're getting wrinkles a little bit early on in life. You probably notice that you don't recover as well when it comes down to your skin. Well, guess what? It doesn't stop there. You have a lot of collagen in your joints as well. So if you're someone that's dealing with a lot of joint pain, in addition to the inflammation that is caused by the sugar that occurs in your joints, we also have the breakdown of collagen, which is making it so your joints can't recover. These AGEs are not good. It's not a normal response that should be occurring within the body. When it happens, it should be happening at a very small amount, but we're consuming so much sugar, it's a huge issue. Okay, now let's move in to the arteries and the heart for a second. Here's the thing. So much of the common media and so much of what we hear today all tells us that fats are the enemy when it comes down to atherosclerosis, when it comes down to high blood pressure, when it comes down to any kind of heart disease. Well, a lot of us are starting to find now and researchers are starting to conclude that Ansel Keys wasn't exactly correct when he first said that cholesterol was the issue when it comes down to heart disease. You see, inflammation is truly the issue, and a lot of doctors and researchers are starting to see that now. You see, what happens when we have an insulin spike that occurs from consuming sugar, we have cells in our arterial walls that actually harden up. So the arterial walls themselves become more stiff, they become more hard, which means that they don't flex as much. When they don't flex as much, it means that's more resistance against the blood, which means higher blood pressure, which also means there's less flex, which means it's easier to end up having a clot or have atherosclerosis. We don't want that to happen, obviously. A lot of the reactions with atherosclerosis or any kind of blood clots like that, a lot of times occur simply because of inflammation's response to LDL or inflammation's response to sugar, of course, within the bloodstream. Now, studies are now showing that there is a solid link there. But again, I'm preaching to the choir. So let's move into the next phase. It's where I want to talk about the brain. See, the brain has a bigger response to sugar than the body. But as we well know, the brain is sort of the precursor to everything that's going to happen in the physical body after that. Let's first start with addiction. I don't know if you knew this or not, but sugar responds in the brain similar to heroin and similar to alcohol in a lot of ways. It has to do with affecting the dopamine receptors in our brain. We have a high level of what is called dopamine desensitivity that occurs. So every time we consume sugar, we get a dopamine rush. We get a little bit high from it, and that's why it feels so good, and that's why we crave it. Well, that desensitization occurs, which means that you end up needing more and more sugar to get the same result. Well, it doesn't stop there. 
we actually have opioid receptors in our brain. These are receptors that usually are triggered by things like heroin or morphine. Well, guess what? They're triggered by sugar as well. So we're now finding through research that sugar has gram for gram almost as powerful of an effect on those areas of the brain as most street drugs do. That's pretty darn powerful. Now to add insult to injury, we have cross sensitization with alcohol and amphetamines when it comes to sugar, which means sugar can actually help you build a tolerance to alcohol and build a tolerance to amphetamines. Now, I guess if you're trying to build a tolerance to alcohol, that's not a bad thing, but in reality, that means that we're affecting the same area of our brain. Definitely not good. All right, let's move into depression. This is a big one because a lot of people will bring up which came first, the chicken or the egg. Does a depressed person or a person that has a mood disorder go to sugar because it helps them feel better? Or does someone that consumes sugar acquire symptoms of depression or mood disorders? Well, a 2017 study in the Scientific Journal took a look at that. So this 2017 study took a look at just that. It broke down which came first, the common mental disorder or a sugar addiction. They took a look at 23,245 people and they had them take assessments, okay? Assessments that looked at their mood and then assessments that logged their food or their sugar intake. But well, what they found is that there was no link between the common mood disorder and reaching for sugary sweets, but there was a link between consuming sugary treats and then acquiring mood issues. Therefore, researchers were easily able to conclude that sugar does indeed trigger the common mood disorder and potentially even depression. Now, I know that this isn't too much new news for you, but I wanted to be able to break it down in some science that you understood. I'm not saying that you need to go and throw away everything that has any trace of refined sugar in it, but I am saying that you do need to start making a little bit more of a concerted effort to avoid that because it does have a direct impact on your aging and it does have a direct impact on your body composition in a lot more ways than just a potentially bad starchy carb would. So as always, keep it locked in on my videos and if you have any ideas for future videos regarding inflammation, ketosis, fasting, you name them below. I always look at them and always get awesome ideas from you guys. So I will see you in the next video.